Right, let's send it out to Jay. He's about to mount that bookcase on that post that he made. <laughs> you do it, Jay. Yeah, the time has come. Yeah, Matt, the time has come. Um, you've probably seen the little free libraries. They're all over Northeast Ohio. Really, they're all over the United States. We decided that for my JAY DIY project, it would be a good idea to build one of these. They're sustainable, they help promote literacy, and they really do a lot of good for the communities that they serve, particularly when you can find an area where there is sort of a book desert. There's not a lot of libraries or book access to kids in that community. So yesterday I came out here, I, I built the actual library a couple of weeks ago, but yesterday I came out here and I had to dig the hole and concrete the post into the hole. Um, it was interesting that I picked the absolute hottest day of the year to do that. I think I lost four or five pounds in the process, but it was fun. And building the library was a ton of fun. We recorded it. It is this week's JAY DIY. And while you watch how this thing got built, I'm actually going to mount this on the post. And by the time we're done, we should be good to go. Little Free Library is by far the biggest project I've done to date. It's going to cost you about $250, but maybe you want to do it as a neighborhood project and folks can chip in. You need a lot of materials. It's up on the website, and I'm going to give you a look at it right here of what you need. You'll need a 4 by 8 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. If you buy it at Home Depot, they'll gladly rip it in half for you. That way it's easier to transport. I have four 2 by 4 sections, and that gives you plenty of plywood to make all of your cuts. Other supplies you'll need, wood screws, wood glue, of course, an assortment of tools. Also, you'll need some door hardware once you go to attach the door at the end. And you'll need a sheet of plexiglass to cut your window for your door. First up, we're building the base to the structure that will attach to a post that will go into the ground. So to start there, you have to cut a template. I just cut a sliver off my 4x4 post. I'm going to place this in the geographic center of my base, and then I'm just going to cut my 2x4s all the way around it so it's got a nice snug fit. Now it's time to attach the side. I'm going to again use some construction adhesive, a couple of screws. Once all the sides are attached, it's time to make your door. What I did was just draw my opening for my door centered on the front with this being my top line. Drill some holes and use a jigsaw to cut out your door opening. Then screw it into place. Next up, we'll build the door. So I've cut all my door pieces. There's four of them. It just has to be big enough to cover the 11 by 14 inch hole in the front. I'm going to go ahead and paint it before I put the plexiglass and the hardware on. And the last step would be to mount it onto the body. Once your structure is set, you're ready to paint. So before I painted, I caulked all my seams, and you'll notice I left my left side of the roof off. The reason I did that is so I could easily get inside. Next up, let's move to the roof. I wanted to weatherproof mine, so I used roofing paper and roof flashing. That's key to keep everything dry inside. Those will go under your cedar shingles. So now I'm ready to apply my cedar shingles, and we're just to start at the bottom edge on each side, and we're gonna go all the way over. Double up the bottom course, and one more tip, leave an eighth of an inch gap between your cedar shake shingles. That way, it allows for expansion due to weather. Get a saw, cut them clean at the end. Next step, build your topper. More construction adhesive and wood screws will make sure it's secure. This will hide my last row of nails on each side. Comes together very cleanly. And now it's time for the finishing touches, adding hardware to the door a little more paint, and one last detail inside. Okay, as you can see, my shelf now is ready to go in place. I've drilled a pilot hole on the side, and I'm gonna drive a screw in there, just so it stays in place. This way we have a shelf inside that's not gonna move, so you can put more books in there too. This library has plenty of space to fill with good reads to share for free, and plenty of community spirit too.